Hi, welcome to Burns Rare and Well Done video podcast that we made especially for you about our culinary and lifestyle book. I'm Christina Laxer. And I'm David Laxer. Nearly 60 years ago, my parents created Burns Steakhouse. So David, what's that scene apart? So Dean's passion and his untiring search for unique products and to educate our staff makes him a perfect fit to run our spirits program. Well, let's go see what he's shaking up now. Dean, so you're going to be making us a high noon today, even though it's not high noon, but we'll take it. And it's right on the edge of watermelon season, but hopefully you're reading this book and it's summertime and you want something <laughs> to kind of cool you off and this will be that drink. So what we did is we spiced the tequila with Espelette chili and then we're going to muddle watermelon into it. So watermelon and, and heat go really well together. Uh, spicy food in the summertime goes really well together. Great. Well, can you show us how to make it? Well, the watermelon is just going to get muddled in here. And you're using a metal shaker versus a glass that you typically would see at home. Like, there's a benefit to using a metal? That's personal preference. And a lot of modern bartenders tend to like what we call tin on tin. For one, this isn't going to break. Yep. And, but also, as soon as I add ice in here and seal this up, the ice is not going to spend a lot of energy cooling down the tin, as it will spend a lot of energy trying to cool down the glass. Got it. So it has two benefits. I think you should teach a class just on that popping motion, <laughs> but that's OK. We can do that. That'd be, that should be a really fun one. The techniques and tools is very important. So this is now the tequila that you blended with a special chili, correct? Yes, yeah, so Blanco tequila. Any good Blanco tequila that you put in your margarita will, will do fine. And we're going to let it sit on the chili for about an hour. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to strain it through a um, coffee filter. Or if you don't really care so much about the particles, you can do it through a cheesecloth. And it won't really go bad? Oh, no. Okay. So the recipe in the, in the book calls for two ounces. Okay, two ounces. And what, Ooh, uh, it's, a, it's a big drink. And we, drink. <laughs> we realized the bartenders and I playing around with this over the last uh, four years or so, I think we've been making this drink, is that to dial the recipe down to only an ounce and a half of tequila, it just got really wonky with the other ingredients. Okay. So two ounces of the spiced tequila, and then we're going to flip this uh, guy over here, and we're going to put a full ounce of lime juice. And this fresh is fresh. Yep. So every, all the juices we use are fresh. Only. Okay. And this is agave nectar. I uh, suggest getting the clearest, cleanest looking agave nectar you can find. So tasty. Um, anything darker is going to start lending flavor to your drink, and you definitely don't want that. You want that light tequila flavor that comes with agave nectar. So we'll ice right, this down. Got this much tequila in, and I'm not sure the agave is what's getting you uh, in the spirit, if you will. So you'll fill this all the way up with ice. See, Tap that on there really good. And you can really, right you can like really pound that on there, not worry about breaking this. It get, makes it harder to get apart, but then I'll show you a trick to that in a second. This is why Dean should be in the movie, and I do the PR. If you uh, see how it's kind of oblong, mm -hmm. if you squeeze on that, it usually oh. just pops right off. Look at that. And you can't always do that with the glass. And so you're saying too, like a good indicator for you is to know when it's cold enough is yes, when it feels cold. You can see how it's chilled up there, and you're going to feel it in your hands that once it gets to a certain temperature, it's not going to dilute anymore. Okay. It's already done its work. So you can shake it an, an extra minute, and what that's going to do is you're going to create more ice chips, which then will dilute your drink. Down. You just like yeah. shake it, shake, shake, shake. You, shake you can it. shake it all you want until you're exhausted. <laughs> if, you, if you can keep smiling at that cute girl and keep shaking your drink, I it's like fine. It. <laughs> so you strain it twice. Just to remove the watermelon particles. Watermelon bits. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you have a seeded watermelon. You don't want any seeds in your drink. Okay. And this makes a really big drink, but it's coming across really cold. And the first couple sips, <laughs> it's going to be mostly gone because this is a really delicious cocktail. Really light and refreshing. It's so pretty. Look at the color. Drinks with and snacks that, are great. Yeah, but that watermelon's not marinated in anything, so nope. it's just, just compressed. Can I try it? Oh, please do. I'll let you pick it up because I got it pretty full there. Like, I'll be very careful. That is so delicious. I mean, talk about a refreshing cocktail mm. for any time of year, especially in the summertime. But this is Chef Chad Johnson's favorite cocktail. Yes, and he make. doesn't like tequila. With I probably would just like soak this watermelon in this beverage and then eat it at the end. I think that might be the best snack time. Well, thank you, Dean. Mm. I think this was absolutely fantastic, and we'll have more for you coming up. This is the high noon.